Kodi Champ. Today we're going to be finding out what is the best premium 15 inch content creation laptop. Now these are the three I have chosen. I think we always have to put the MacBook Pro in here. It will be upgraded soon so I will update this video when it gets upgraded but it's the Mac you can buy now. So when I think of this segment and I'm looking at Windows laptop I think what is the MacBook Pro of Windows laptops and when I think of that I think of ZenBook Pros, XPS 15. I don't think of Razer's as an MSI's. They are clearly gaming laptops. These are not gaming laptops although the Aero 15 you could argue probably is as well but you know the Aero 15 has stuff like like Pantone certified displays. It has the super fast SD card slot, which, you know, the Razer doesn't have. And most importantly, it's not branded Aorus. So it is not considered by Gigabyte to be a gaming laptop. But as you'll see later, a game's like a champ. Now, the review for all these products are in the description, so make sure you check them out. But for now, I'll leave you with the two best reviews of those products. So if you go to Jared's Tech, you get the best review of the MSI GS65. And talking to Jared, he said the Gigabyte was better. And I'm pretty sure I would come to the same conclusion as him when I review that. And the best review of the new Razer Blade is Mobile Tech's review, Lisa Grade. Lisa done the best review of that that I have seen. So I'll leave a link to her video as well. But reviews on those units will be coming soon anyway. But I still think they belong in the gamer sort a section of this 15 inch premium laptop that don't belong in the content creation although it is semantics right you know you could use either or for both anyway let's get into this the three i've chosen the macbook pro 15 inch which i've got to always include a mac the xps 15 9570 and the aero 15x so when it comes to price more or less the xps 15 and the gigabyte aero are around the same price for comparable spec give or take 100 here or there all these laptops are expensive they're over two grand although with the xps 15 you can start at 999 but comparable specs they're all over two grand they're all expensive. Now the MacBook Pro, you cannot get comparable specs because it is using last generation parts. But if you spec it up to be as fast as it can be, to even compete with these new 15 inch eighth generation laptops, it can cost you like a thousand dollars more. Some people can justify that, that is totally up to you. But certainly the XPS 15 and the Aero 15 are the better value for the parts you get. Now, when it comes to specs, I will leave this spec screen up here so you can see in the blue writing is what I consider the best specs in each category now when it comes to the macbook pro 15 inch of course it's using last generation parts so we're talking seventh generation quad core parts which are still good parts but they are well and truly eclipsed by the new eighth generation six core parts so you're getting two less cores with the macbook pro 16 gigabytes of ddr3 that's the maximum no 32 gigs with the macbook pro i'll talk about the displays later but you can get up to two terabyte ssd storage on the macbook pro and for what it's worth it is the fastest SSD and the bunch no doubt about it but you cannot upgrade it 76 watt hour battery and it comes in at 1.83 kilos and 15.5 millimeters thick now the XPS 15 comes with the eighth generation up to i9 CPU so it's the only one you can get the i9 six cores of course up to 32 gigabytes of RAM 2666 megahertz 4 gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti up to 2 terabyte SSD which one you get can vary depending on who's supplying them to Dell at the time but generally it is a fast one 96 watt hour battery and it comes in at two kilos 4.5 pounds 17 millimeters thick and the Aero 15 eighth generation i7 six cores we're talking here but you can only get an i7 so again two extra cores than the macbook pro up to 32 gigs ram the same as the xps 15 2666 megahertz and 8 gigabyte gtx 1070 max q wow that is like serious graphics power there and by the way the xps 15 is max q as well the highest configuration i saw was one terabyte ssd of course you can upgrade it and it has two m.2 slots so you can put two m.2 drives in there 94.2 watt hour battery replaceable two kilos pretty much the same as the xps 15 in terms of weight 4.49 pounds but it's a little bit thicker 18.9 millimeters thick so when it comes to specs and especially for the price you're paying the best specs are the aero 15 i would say because of that graphics card you can get the gtx 1070 but you got to remember the xps 15 you can also get the i9 so if you want the i9 the only option is the xps 15 macbook pro is well behind that is what it is but again hopefully it'll be upgraded soon now when it comes to design 
they're all premium materials. They're all premium quality. I'd say the MacBook Pro has the overall best fit and finish. I'd say it looks the best from the outside, but when you open up the display, I think the XPS 15 with that Infinity Edge display and that carbon fiber deck looks the best once you open them. Also, the Aero 15 has that small thin bezel as well. So you get that effect with that. I'm just going to say my bias here. I don't like black laptop. So although the Aero 15 is very premium, it has a more utilitarian look and it probably doesn't look as elegant as say the XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro, but all of them are premium and have solid build qualities. You won't have complaints with either of them. In terms of weight and thickness, the Mac is the thinnest, but it does have the smallest battery. So it's 15.5 millimeters thin and 1.8 kilos or just around four pounds so it is the thinnest and lightest but it has the smallest battery and the xps 15 which comes at in around two kilos 4.5 pounds 17 millimeters thick you can actually get it starting at less than four pounds if you get the small battery in the full hd version but with this fully specced up one 17 mil is still good and i don't think anyone's going to complain it's a little bit heavier than the macbook pro considering it does have a bigger battery and the aero 15 18.9 millimeters thick it is the thickest out of the Bunch, but handling them all, I don't feel that it's a massive difference between all of them. Although the Mac does feel the thinnest because it has the thinnest edges. Now, when it comes to ports, there's only one winner here the Aero 15. Well done, Gigabyte. They give you every single port. We're talking USB 3s, we're talking mini display port, HDMI, Ethernet, Thunderbolt 3 times 4, every port you want. The XPS 15 would be the next best when it comes to ports. You know, you pretty much have all the same ports minus the display. Display port and the Ethernet of the Aero 15, and the MacBook Pro just has four times four Thunderbolt ports. Now, the motherboards on all these support 16 lanes of PCI Express. That's what Apple have done with theirs. They've just done four times four Thunderbolt ports. I much prefer the XPS 15 and Aero's configuration for ports, and of course, they both have SD card slots. And the Aero 15 has UHS 2 SD card slots, so it has the fastest SD card slot available. So, easy win here for the Aero 15 in ports, but the XPS 15 has pretty much every port you need as well. And the Mac, yeah, dongle life. When it comes to sound, the Mac has the best sound, undoubtedly. It'll get probably a 10 out of 10. The XPS 15 and Aero, yeah, probably about an 8 out of 10 for the sound there. I think that's an easy win for the Mac. Keyboard and trackpad, I think this is pretty easy as well. Mac has 10 out of 10 trackpad without a doubt, it's the best. The XPS 15 would have about an 8, 8.5 out of 10 trackpad. And the Aero 15 is my least favourite trackpad and it's about a 7, 7.5. I mean, it's not bad, but clearly the XPS 15 and MacBook Pro have a better trackpad when it comes to keyboard. These things can be personal preference. I don't like the Mac keyboard that much. It's a bit too shallow. I definitely think the XPS and the Aero both have great keyboards. And with the Aero, you do get the RGB keyboard as well per key lighting and they're both good keyboards you also get a number pad on the aero 15 which personally i don't like because it shifts the keyboard a bit left so i do prefer just the layout of the xps 15 keyboard although they're equally as good just to use for typing when it comes to displays well they all have fantastic displays but I'll give the win to the Aero 15 and the XPS 15 here because of the 4K and we're talking 100% Adobe RGB, very color accurate. And also with the Aero, you have the option of the full HD 144 Hertz display too. So if you're a gamer, that's the way to go. The Aero 15 has Pantone certified display, so they are super color accurate and they're both matte 4K or the full HD. Content creators dream with the Aero 15. XPS 15, one of the best displays you can get when you're talking about the 4k display it is superb so with the xps 15 and aero 15 a tie there for the best display but the arrow gets a like extra tick because you do have that 144 hertz full hd option as well and they're both matte and pantone certified so a little extra bonus for the aero 15 now the macbook pro has a brilliant display too it is the brightest display out of them all it is high resolution also but it's not 4k so it's not quite as sharp but it is 16 by 10 where the other laptops are 16 by 9 it makes it a bigger laptop in terms of how deep it is so it actually feels like the biggest laptop out of all of them not talking about thickness here i'm just talking about general footprint but that extra height does make a difference for content creation. So you get more real estate vertically, which I do appreciate. It's a brilliant display, but 
It's just not of the quality of the XPS 15 and Aero. When it comes to battery life, well, funnily enough, the XPS 15 has the best battery life, even though I had the 4K model, which was very interesting to me. It does have the biggest battery, of course, at 96 watt hours or really 97 watt hours. And that's good for about, you know, seven, eight hours. MacBook Pro, a bit inconsistent, the battery life. It has the smallest battery. Definitely when you video edit in the battery, just really plummets on that. So I'll give that around a seven hour battery life and it's pretty much even with the Aero 15. Now I had the full HD Aero 15 and I would say that was seven hours battery life. Now if you go to 4K, you know, take an hour or two off that. I'll give the win here to the XPS 15 and if you have the full HD on the XPS 15, you're going to be getting well in excess of 10 hours battery life. And I think it's a tie for second between the Aero and the MacBook Pro. Upgradability, well forget about it with the Mac. It's an appliance, you might be upgrading anything. With the Aero 15, the XPS 15, you can upgrade the RAM, upgrade the SSD, and you even have the option of a two and a half inch drive. In the XPS 15, you have to have the smaller battery model if you want to do that. But I prefer the Gigabyte Aero's way of doing things where they have two M.2 slots rather than the two and a half inch drive bay option and one M.2 slot. I prefer the Gigabyte Aero having that two M.2 slots. So you can upgrade RAM and storage on the Aero 15, the XPS 15 Mac, forget about it. You're not upgrading anything. In terms of performance, I'll give the win here to the Aero 15, that, that GTX 1070 Max-Q and the fact that it doesn't throttle, well it didn't throttle for me at least, some people have been saying it does throttle but for me it didn't, you get the maximum performance out of that Aero 15, it does get hot underneath so it is uncomfortable on the lap I will say that if you're gaming or something like that and it is the loudest out of the lot but in terms of performance it is the best, the XPS 15 is a powerhouse too, if you use the GPU and CPU together you will get some thermal throttling in such tasks like gaming. Fortunately, I was still able to get 60 frames per second, you know, pretty much on high settings, even with that throttling. So even though it's not ideal that it does throttle, at least I'm still getting the performance in the gaming. But the XPS 15 with that i9 was the only laptop I've tested that could play back Cineform 8K footage at full. No other laptop has done that. So I think that i9 does make a difference there. But the XPS 15 is a powerhouse too when it comes to the MacBook Pro. It is certainly still a powerful package but yeah it is last generation so it doesn't really compare to these latest Windows laptops with the 8th generation parts. It is of a magnitude behind in terms of performance. So overall which one do I think is the best? Well if you're a Mac user you're going to buy the Mac anyway so, but I would say wait for the upgrade of the Mac where I'll do another video once they upgrade the Macs. But in terms of the Aero 15 and the XPS 15 which one do I think is better? Well I think if you're a spec head just get the Aero 15. If you're a gamer just get the Aero 15 but in my personal usage situation where number one for me and number two is web surfing just general email etc and content creation the XPS 15 in the timeline performs as good as the Aero 15 and as I said it's the only one that can play back red 8k footage that is uncompressed to Cineform Considering they're the two things I do most, the XPS 15 is better for me. But as I said, if you're a spec head, you just want the most power, get the Aero 15. Or you're a gamer, get the Aero 15. You're just going to have to work out your usage. And for me, gaming comes third. So overall, the usability of the XPS 15 for daily use using that trackpad, the keyboard, and how it performs for me inside Premiere Pro, inside the timeline, just shades it from the Aero 15. Now, if the Aero 15 had a better trackpad, I'll probably go with that. I would also like the option of a 99 in the Aero 15. That'll be really awesome. So maybe they can put that in. That wouldn't be too hard to implement. But I do love the Aero 15. I've got to give them a massive tick for all the ports, all this power, no throttling, and, you know, two M.2 ports as well. It is a dream machine. Honestly, I I could go either way and you'll be happy either way but just that usability just shades it a bit for me with the xps 15 if i was a gamer i'd straight away go the aero 15 so that's it guys let me know in the comments what you guys think we'll update this when i get new laptops and they update the max if you're new around here please subscribe and until next time tally ho